Bonjour, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. This club is exactly how it sounds. A bunch of amateurs talking about their favorite mysteries. So if you encounter a real mystery or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Do not come to us. We do not know what we are doing. But enjoy the program. Allons-y. Let us begin. I now found this meeting of the average detective club to uh, an opening. <laughs> Come over here to the opening. It's a crevasse. My name is Tristan Miller, the Aussie sleuth. I'm Melissa Maley, the spy. <laughs> I'm Tyler Riley, cop and a half. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free 30, a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and browse the unmatched selections of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It is that easy. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and start listening. Start listening. Oh, we, no, we got ourselves into a loop. Wait, no, it's that easy. We're waiting for who could do. What? Uh, <laughs> third base. Adcpod. Um, no, it's, yeah, it's just, you just give the, the vanity URL again, and that's it. And right. you can go, what audio Which is book? what? <sighs> Audibletrial.com slash ADC pod. Um, what book, besides the Bible, do you recommend? <laughs> David um, Suchet reads the entire thing, the I entire have, Bible. I have heard that. Yeah. Uh, I my... have it in my audio book, Audible Library. <laughs> Oh, so, boy. <laughs> so we are all three together again at last. And this is why the energy has shifted. Because now I can talk over any of you and you'll know I'm doing it rather than the connection being bad. Lucky oh, us. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Amateur Detective Club After Dark. Yeah, we were also recording it at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday. Club going up on a Tuesday. Yeah. And Turn Tyler. up for what? Literally. Yeah. What, are, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing here for this episode? Uh, okay. But uh, Tyler and I are drinking a bottle of rosé. And so that should be fun for all of you and Tristan and us, actually. I, I think for the viewers, not so much for Tristan. Tristan ah. has to edit. Oh, oh you think I'm going to edit this? Nah. <laughs> Nah, We're dude. just putting it up. The views of Tyler Riley do not reflect the views of Theater Development Fund. <laughs> just going to blanket, put that out there, right at the top. And then you say, I hate Theater Development Fund. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I would never say that. He would because never. Because TDF <laughs> offers... <laughs> No, no, no. What? What are the... Come on. Come on. TDF offers quality membership for... Union members, military, teachers, students, uh, retirees, visit tdf.org to see if you qualify for membership, and that will give you access to discount tickets to Broadway, Off-Broadway, Off-Off-Broadway, dance, music, and streaming events. And we're getting it back soon, aren't we? Yes. Uh, live performances have begun here in New York City. Yeah. And Broadway opens in June? No. Uh, to be determined. Okay. But... The- there was a bill passed recently that uh, would allow it to reopen soon. May 19th was the date, and Broadway says no. Good. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. Um, I have a question. Do you offer discounts for people who are like myself and uh, stupid but hot? Check tdf.org <laughs> for our list of qualifications for membership. And uh, put in the search bar, stupid but hot. Stupid but hot. <laughs> See what comes up. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, by the way, I figured out the rule for um, us cussing. In this episode, mm-hmm. we get a damn bitch and shit. So anything the... Sh- the I used one. Yeah. Well, you can use more. Anything I can use that- unlimited <laughs> shit. I-, I can have unlimited shit. <laughs> I mean, you go to Taco Bell, uh, you tell me what, ooh. Um, but yeah, no, that's my reckoning. If it's said in the show, we can say it on the program. That is my oh. reckoning. That okay. Is, that is what it is. What the- With the exception when we're doing, like, if we ever do Blue Velvet, which I'm going to try and get us to review, <laughs> we can't say the stuff that's in that movie. Fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
after about four tries and then uh, and then my uh, Google informing me things that I have searched recently, mm-hmm. we are reviewing the episode of sure. Agatha Christie's Poirot, series 10, episode four, Taken at the Flood. At the Flood. I don't I know about that. Can- <laughs> I'm sorry to this episode. Let's get this out of the way. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry to this episode. I do not I do not know her. It's maybe not its fault. No, I think it's its fault. It's, a, it's its fault. It's its fault. Um, well, you have our reviews at the top. Congratulations on yeah. this episode. Mm. <laughs> do you want to just read the plot synopsis from the Wikipedia and then talk about how we didn't understand the episode? Well, the thing Those is... Those in favor? Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's different. Than the book. Well, don't they have oh, the plot synopsis right. for the movie? The no, movie? it's or just that oh, paragraph thing. No, I can read no, you. Oh, no. Though, to be fair, <laughs> well, we really know the difference. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the thing is, the Wikipedia no. says. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, this go is, ahead. This is good. You're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's always reassuring when someone has to say good. It's like a comedian saying, we're having fun. No, we're going to have fun. It's going to be great. I'm here. Um, (laughs) I I was told I was the best audience member when I saw Tristan's show two weeks ago. Uh Yes. It says, it has the plot, and so I read the plot Mm because after I saw the episode, because I didn't know what happened, Hmm. and then I read the differences uh, in the adaptation that it also says on the Wikipedia, and some of them, I was like, oh, is that different? I didn't notice. (laughs) So, uh, that should tell you a lot. So, grab your favorite bottle of dry rosé mm-hmm. and settle into this episode of the Amateur Detective Club. Uh-huh. 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. Don't care. Pour that glass of wine for yourself <laughs> yep. and get through this. Because <laughs> we have to, too. So, there is a weird opening to this. Yeah, there's like yeah. a bomb, right? Well, there's a man on a bench. Yeah. Uh, Sitting on a park bench. Uh, with... What? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Just move on. <laughs> All right, Aqualung. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but like, I just... <laughs> <bench>. <laughs> Sorry, let me deliver it in the way it came into my mind. <clears throat> Sitting on a park bench. That was better. Uh, Jethro Tell. Is that better? That was. Does that, was that better make more me. sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Because um, I, I was going Forrest Gump and you went in a very oh, different place. And wow. that's where I was like, oh, okay, well, my joke's not going to work now, is no, it? Oh, yeah, we see a well. feather floating down. There's a man on a bench. Is there? And he has a button. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> did Melissa watch this episode? I did. Uh, I, I can confirm that we all sat in front of mm-hmm. after... Taken by the funeral of the floods. Uh, <laughs> taken at the flood. <laughs> Can I tell you? I was making a grilled cheese during this first part, Ooh, so yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, it was, I'm like oh, uh, excited you got about the concept of bread and cheese. <laughs> Have you ever had a grilled cheese with apples on it? Fantastic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, tomato. because I've always mm-hmm. been nervous about picking the wrong kind of apple. Oh, I don't you... think you can. I mean, unless it's a red delicious, which is always terrible. Um, I'll yeah, say this, should, green like, apple. Who named them that? Thank you. Green apple's the best. Okay. If you can get an apple, um, not a curry or a paste, it's also very good. Oh, um, sure. Caveat, a great venue that's reopening here in New York, did one for a while. I don't know if they're going to have it when mm. they come back, but there's a like a, an apple paste. Or you can put applesauce. You know, you can put applesauce in... Oh, um, I wonder what, like an apple butter. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. That sounds really... Boots yeah, with, that the fur, with the fur. With the fur. When I was a kid... <laughs> We're not gonna talk about the episode, are we? It was, nope. I cl- I remember where we are. Yeah, I bet. Great. <laughs> At the beginning of we'll the episode. talk about the episode. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, one of the snacks that my grandmother used to give to me was uh, a plate full of like fruit cut up and uh, cheese. Also, mm-hmm. so I would take charcuterie mm-hmm, with fruit. Yeah. So I would take a an apple fruity? slice and put a piece of cheddar on yeah. the apple. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I still do that. Apples, peanut butter, too. Yeah, that's oh, also yeah. good. Also, ants and apples on a and log. Honey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm? I couldn't get into them. Okay. Ants on a log? 
Don't like yeah. raisins? Don't like celery. Oh. oh, so here's the thing. Our answer to the log, banana, peanut butter, marshmallows. I don't like bananas. Oh. Yeah. I like I'm a bana- weird. I the texture kind of I'm not a fan of. Um, you put it in a smoot, a smoothie. Oh yeah, I'll do it in a smoothie. But yeah, it's yeah. a consistency oh, okay. thing. Yeah, it's just like peppers. Like I like I don't mind spicy food, but the consistency of like a pepper itself. Ugh. Oh, Jiminy mm. Christmas. Um, Are you out of wine, Tyler? I could use yeah, a fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. a fresh no, yeah. This is staying in. Um, uh, no. So we are at the top of the episode. This man is on a bench, and for some reason, he's giving us some sort of backstory about this man who is oh, married Lord, to yeah. their words, their words, child bride, child bride oh. of My this man, this grown, nasty ass, old, old ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Has a child bride, <laughs> and um, nobody's happy about it. Yeah, no, as one. Uh, so his siblings and some of their children are coming to the house to be introduced to the probably br- blushing bride because she young. Yeah. Um, and so they arrive with. at the house, but before they can even reach the door, the house explodes. Yeah. From the inside. It goes... Yeah. But from the wreckage, from from the debris, from the gray cloud of smoke (laughs) engulfing (laughs) is the child bride and her brother, who were apparently were in a cellar, like picking out wine when the explosion occurred. That's right. Okay, but go off, sis. But not with (laughs) not with a sibling, but you know. Picking out wine. That's where I would be when the explosion occurs. Most likely. Let's see. Where would I be if I was... I would be the one uh, who had just set the fuse. I want to blow up a building. I've seen Mythbusters. You ever think about blowing stuff up? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had a shit-eating grin. (laughs) Insert cricket here. So, huge explosion happens, like in Mythbusters. Yes. Oh, God, we're still here. Okay. And then, <laughs> yeah. So, then it cuts to present day, yes, because this was a flower spark. It was. Yeah. Poro, it, basically, this guy is telling Poro the story. Yeah. Who is this man that is telling it? Major Robert something. Major. Like, no. Is he a. a... Oh, <laughs> you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a, uh, a an ancestor? Oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to just ask you guys questions about the episode. Oh, sure. Um, I'll be oh, the goodness. viewer. Uh, is he related to this family? No, no. He served with the deceased. Okay. Uh, when they were serving in Mombasa together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so he's saying all this, and then Poirot's Wait, like, I'm almost there. I why promise. are you telling me Major this? James Porter. Okay. Porter! Porter! I hardly know her. I, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. Um. <laughs> In my mind, every time we say a plot point, it's that clip, the Blue Jeans baby clip from Trump of like, this is the first time I'm, I'm hearing of it, you know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first time. Oh. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Uh, okay. But uh, so, yes, we're talking to. He's give, He's the one mm-hmm. providing. James Porter's providing us the backstory. And we then see present day Mrs. And she gets a phone call. Bring, bring. No. I don't know. Okay. She gets a phone call. <laughs> I just said bring, bring like a telephone does. <laughs> she gets a phone call and it's Hello? this pr- menacing voice on the other line. <laughs> I, I will it. drop the word. On the- <laughs> oh, gets God. a call and it's like this voice harassing. I think. The voice like calls her like uh, a gold digging slut oh, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We get like you hussy out of this. It's very yeah. like she yeah. um because Oh, you you a... Irish 
Slut. Wow. You <laughs> could choose my nickname in high school. Uh, yeah, we'll get into the, the Irish of it all if you want. Um, but isn't there a party scene beforehand or is this afterwards? This is before because then there's a party scene. Yeah. Okay. Because this woman is obsessed, presumably the same woman, that person that called, maybe? I don't know if that's revealed now, but it is later. Um, <laughs> yes. This older woman who is a, a, a medium, medium okay. rare. Um, she, uh, she is obsessed with Mrs., as you said, being a bigamist. And I was like, what is bigamy? What is bigamy? Oh. And it's being a it's being a hoe, right? No, it's being it's married, being married uh, to more than one person. Mm-hmm. I said what I said. <laughs> okay. No. Um, Go off, sis. <laughs> CIS. <laughs> and <laughs> the the Confederacy of Independent Systems from Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. No. He knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this episode is enjoyable to anyone but uh, us. <laughs> we're going to get some complaints. Um, but she's upset with... Because um, the whole the whole because family's she's, Catholic, right? Uh, no, they're, everyone's upset about the money. The money is being now going to this child bride and not them. Yes. Rosaline? Is that is the Yeah, is the child bride. The missus. Okay. Yeah, Rosaline the Claude? Clode, yeah. Lack a hind. Yeah. And I believe she's talking to a woman named B, I want to say. That might have just been, she looked like a B-E-A to me. It was B. Arthur, if you could believe it. If only. No, she was she was supposed to be in the episode. I don't oh, know no. This woman was. Aunt mm. Kathy. Oh, Aunt Kathy, that's I right. I don't know why. There is a Beatrice, mm. but it just wasn't who I thought it was. No. Speaking of Star Wars, okay, okay, um, <laughs> the the woman that's the medium that's very upset about the big and me, uh, uh, Kathy. Kathy, Kathy, she is in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. She plays a fighter pilot and has like four lines. It's delightful. She's also in a bunch of other stuff like Bridget Jones's Diary One and Two. Mm. She's she gets around acting wise. She's in Doctor Who. Oh, I refuse to watch uh, Bridget Jones' Diary. No, okay. oh. I think it's too private. <laughs> I like that we're in the same space now, Tyler, so I can kick your ass. No. <laughs> How can you try it? <laughs> How can you well, I've it? learned a few things from GTA recently. Oh my goodness. Uh, so they're all pissy that this woman is getting the money that she's owed from her dead husband or yeah. yes yeah they're all upset about the law <laughs> yeah because i mean they have not like they've been married for a minute and she's a child <laughs> how old is she i don't i don't think it's ever said okay what is the, does the the book say does the book give an age the good book not that I know of. Okay. Not according to the Wikipedia. <clears throat> Wikipedia? Mm-hmm. Uh, so... But her brother, like, is with her and, David. like, is in control, like, of the estate somehow. Sure. Because yeah. he's a man and older. That makes sense. That's, yep. uh, that's of God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this guy is named David. And he... Not the David. Not your love of your life, Tyler David. Ugh. It's not the love of my life. It's the love of Jessica's life. She just doesn't know oh, it David. yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's been a while. You, Jessica it, Fletcher's life. I admittedly, see. Melissa, it's been a minute since we've referenced David from, from, from Murder, Murder, Murder David Shiro? Tolliver yeah. from <laughs> Murder It's like been at least six months. <laughs> at, oh, gosh. Um, at least. So David is awful. Is it clear yet? He's a yes. bad attitude, yeah, from the get, from the jump, as they say. So the yeah. minute I heard his voice, I knew he oh, was bad. Oh, you racist. You racist because oh. he's Irish. You xenophobe. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. Oh, you. It's refreshing that after all these years of Poirot watching, they finally got one of the races. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you can't be racist. 
Um, <laughs> oh, those are the rules of the United States. That's correct. The 46% of me disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, is this because we get a moment where. So, okay. Rosaline, is that the, the sister's name? Baby. No, that's the child bride. That's baby. Is that his sister? Is that oh, David's name? sister. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, she writes a check for somebody. Yes. Because they are having trouble with money. And Tyler's going to find out who that person is. And David just absolutely, they're at a party. It's like in front oh, of Oh, right, this scene. Francis. Yeah. Francis. And he absolutely goes off. No, sorry. Mm. No, yes, no, it's Francis. I apologize. Okay. All good. So, yeah, uh, he goes on a tirade about how he doesn't want Rosaline giving Francis her money and absolutely forbids it. And it's really disgusting and horrifying. And I'm like, oh, this guy is the worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, According to Murder, She Wrote rules, he would have been the one that died. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, spoiler. He does not die. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He, like, at one point... <clears throat> Tells the woman to give like the money back, so she like gives him that tries to give him the check, and he's like, "No, this is my sister's money. You're gonna turn around. You're gonna give it to her." Yeah. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, he's he's got a bad attitude. It's one of those moments when you're just so horrified that you're just absolutely frozen. And you're like, "Okay, I, I guess I'm gonna let you know that you did that, and like, I just want this to be over." Yeah. Though I love that she did have the wherewithal to be like. I shan't remember this. <laughs> she said, I shan't remember your kindness to the sister when returning the check. And then looks at David and goes, and I shan't remember this either. And yeah. walks away. And I was like, you go, girl. Yes. Pronun- pronouncing every syllable and every consonant of it. Mm-hmm. Remember. Then then what happens? Is it the murder? <laughs> and then the break and reveal. <laughs> I mean, Poirot is also there. Oh, yeah. oh right. <laughs> Poirot is also at the party, and he's like, "This, this guy is weird." It is actually easy to forget because they don't give him a whole heck of a lot to do in this episode. There's like one or two. Se- Tyler's his his soul has left his body. Let me crack a window. Um. I didn't remember this was Poro. He's like, <laughs> I was so bored. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Uh, oh. Uh, oh gosh. It's very much just Poro because there is like a really wonderful scene very later on where yeah. it's just him alone in a room and it's, oh, uh, I loved it. I loved that. And there's a scene um, where he's talking to the, uh, to Rosalind. I thought that was quite good as well. Um, so there's this woman, Lynn, who's going to marry this soft boy, uh, Rowley. Rowley, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you can call him soft if you want to. We'll, well get to it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like in uh, socially. Uh, oh, oh, doughy. Oh, okay. You mean doughy? doughy. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Oh, no. He, he, he's a bear. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a sh- handsome bear. Yeah. yeah, he certainly is. Um, and yeah, we do at some oh, point at the beginning of, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we do at the beginning of the episode. Don't get... bother me anytime. <laughs> ah. um, Small smack roll or something. Oh, that's very good. You can smack roll it. Exactly. <laughs> you are right. Thank you for picking up what I was putting down. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And, uh, we got in the beginning of the episode. Oh yeah. Uh, he's Lynn's cousin. It's a great match. And we're like, okay, we're going to do the incest again. And then, yeah, that's fine. So, um. It was for a very long time. You ever think about that? Wait, what? That c- cousins? cousins and, like, second cousins could just get married. And it's, I mean, it's the royals happening. are still doing it. And yeah. people in this country are still doing it. Yeah. I was actually thinking about. Oh, really? Are we just lucky mm. that we don't have to consider our cousins? Is that the thing? Is it us? Huh. I never thought about that, but you might be onto something. I'm sorry, what? 
that we I, like Iceland. They're in like a very like for a while before oh, tourism see, really hit. See. Like the population was what mm. it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what it. This is what I learned from Eurovision, yeah. the movie with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams that I uh, watched last week finally, which is actually very good. I've heard it's very sweet. It is like weirdly sincere. It's really cute. Oh, okay. Did you watch it? And yeah. Like, and you didn't like it. Oh my God, we. Okay. Like as, different like, experience. Yeah, like a good group of like six of us were just like this was the worst. Thing. Oh, okay. Inter- yeah. All right. Like we enjoyed the song "Ding Ding Dong," but who didn't? <laughs> yeah, truly. Um. Okay. What were we even talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so Poirot is there. Oh, that is God. what he's gotten. So there's a party <laughs> no, Poirot. I had a thing. Well, it's gone. I said, has the murder happened? And then you said, breaking news. And then we went on some diatribe. <laughs> I did not utter the words breaking news. You did. <laughs> you did. Run, run it back. I'll, 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 <laughs> run back the tape. <laughs> I'm going to. But anyway, um. So they're all there at the estate, right? And they're all upset that she's getting the money because she's inherited it rightfully. And then a murder occurs seemingly... No, a guy comes in. A guy comes in. And says, I am Rosaline's husband. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, and what's his last name? Wait, it's very Nobody Bobby. meets him except for the murderer. Right? Yeah, Bobby something or other. Robert... Uh, Robert Hayward. Hold, Ooh, yeah. I think I'll that's find correct. it. I'll find it. Robert Underhay. 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 Yes, it's a fun Robert name. Underhay sounds like a hobbit. He does. <laughs> Robert Underhay. Um, that's more like, like giving an excuse for buying up a lady's skirt in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just give them the old Underhay. <laughs> okay. Actually, no, I'm sorry. This man oh. this man is calling himself Enoch Arden. Uh, cut that oh, out because right. it's spoiled. Arden, because yeah, it was, sorry. you know why? Irish name. Sure. So, um, Arden. So, no, no, but mm-hmm. it's still, cra- but they th- like, Enoch Arden is the name that the person's listed at under the hotel, but they get a word that they believe that it is Robert Underhay. So, right, but he's saying he knows how to find Robert Underhay. Like, he's like, oh, I know how to Oh, the friend of Robert that, like, has a connection with David, who's paying him off? Don't look at me. I just hit record. Yeah, um, Robert, I mean, David is paying somebody off to keep a secret. Okay, yes. Um, Seemingly about Robert Underhay, and that's why they get the call. Because, um, David is like... No, uh, the friend, I don't remember the friend's name, and I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> the friend is speaking to David about the blackmail. We don't know what the blackmail is, but there's yes. blackmail happening. Yes. <laughs> Rosaline is being blackmailed, right? Yes. And okay. David is like handling, well, no, it's David because he asked to cut out the middleman, which is David, and speak directly to Rosalind oh. to get his money because David is trying to be all David about things. Yes. Because you know how David is. Yes, <laughs> we do know how David is. He has I demonstrated put, that. Can I tell you, I find it charming how much of an asshole he is. Does that make sense? Like, he, yes. the actor, does such a good job. Of, oh. Like, he, he, like, uh, he, oh. oh. Not for me. I, I y'all can have it. Like I'm not disputing that. It was it was not charming in the least bit oh. for me personally. Well, like a love to hate thing. Not like a ooh how fun. Like a wow this oh, okay. guy's like ju- it's, it's almost like he's so good at being hateable. That's yeah, yeah. It. Okay, and it's then, yes. almost Sorry. funny because he's not a real person. I misunderstood. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, but for me though. Oh really? Oh, Sploosh. Okay. <laughs> Sploosh magoosh. All okay. Right. Is that, is that... <laughs> That's gross, <laughs> gross, but sure. Um, no, there was something about it that Gotta I was like, something out. <laughs> ang- I was a bit angry that I found him attractive. Uh, I'm like, why do I? I hate him. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Mad about it. Okay. Are you? Mm, yes. Are you mad about it? Because like I'm not mad. Like I can find people detestable and hot. Oh, I can't. Like usually. the insurrectionist with the long hair. I was like. <laughs> I throw those angles up in a heartbeat, but like I wouldn't tell anybody about it. <laughs> See, yeah, no, and not normally. Normally, I have to like your personality. 
Uh. And so I'm, I do get mad if I find someone hot and also an asshole. Yeah, and that's why you're so annoyed around me. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So, <laughs> let me explain further <laughs> about this. That has nothing to do with Tristan. Um, <laughs> Girl, we know. <laughs> <laughs> do it because it's so obviously I'm putting these scissors down and it's why it's so obviously <laughs> like my boy with the shovel later in the episode <laughs> oh my god so no okay here's oh. the thing <laughs> this is how we should do it every week <laughs> so um I forgot what I was going to uh, you, you when you find someone who, attractive but they're also a joy oh okay so you can be an uh, but so, uh, uh, a person who's an asshole isn't necessarily a terrible person. Like some of my friends, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're an asshole. Or, you know, Tyler's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Not Tyler. Um, you can be kind of an asshole and be great. Uh, but. Yeah, not completely a sociopath and unkind. You know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So he is handling some sort of blackmail. Take it away. I don't remember this episode. It was a haze. I just watched it an hour ago. And well, I just cannot... making sure uh, he's handling blackmail. I just want to, like, if, oh, I'm sorry. My, depending the, on the em- cut. Yeah. <laughs> the emphasis was on the wrong syllable. Yes. yes. Yeah. In that case. And it also is this period in England. So we have to specify. Oh, that is fair. That is fair. <laughs> just kidding. There was not. Slavery had been abolished <laughs> in England well before the United States, even. Can someone be murdered now? Yeah. Can we do just we need to, to say any more things? More? I mean, someone can be murdered. <laughs> oh, it's me. Please, take me. Take my life. Seriously. So, um, yeah, someone, the guy that they think is Bobby, uh, Robert, gets. Yeah, Robert, Rita Hayworth is. <laughs> gets yes, plunked over the side of the head and dies, is dead. And then we're introduced to a very, again, you love to hate him, folks. Doctor character who comes in and examines the body. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and he plops his hat down. He's like, "Well, this this guy's dead, and uh, I have other patients that can pay me, so I'm gonna scoot." Goodbye, <laughs> Doctor Lionel Woodward. Very fun character, played by Tim B. Joe Smith, who I saw on Broadway in King Charles the Third. Brilliant. Brilliant actor, and I was so happy to see him. I recognized him off the bat. Can I tell you what's interesting about this character? He comes across as kind of a jerk, right? Whereas I think if he was a different actor, but given the same role, he could have been a very charming, fun doctor. I right? disagree because of the reveal. Sure. But, yeah, sure. I see what you're saying, but like, mm. Fine. Um, but anyway, he's introduced along with the superintendent, the commissioner, whose name is something silly. Mm, he was good, actually. I liked his performance very much. Again, he has a mustache. Um, just sure, required yes. by As is required. England. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As is required by England. By, by all England. <laughs> oh, uh, Harold Spence. Superintendent Harold superintendent Spence. Superintendent Spence. Yes. There we go. Um... Yeah, so he's there, and he's um, asked Poirot to help, as has the family help Poirot. They've asked his services to investigate so people can get money yes. somehow as like some sort of pseudo yeah, solicitor. one of the siblings had approached Poirot mm-hmm. about finding the missing husband before mm-hmm. he gets murdered, and Poirot's like... Yeah, no, I don't handle missing persons. That was the, um, the one who was the medium. The one that I thought, uh, Kathy. Kathy, yes. From Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom. <laughs> I stay winning. Um, as the kids say. Uh, so then, after the moita, uh, they're like, well, he certainly got hit up the side of the head with oops, something. Oops, head. It's like, oops, oops, sad head. <laughs> oops, all murder. Um... <laughs> Oops, all murder. The alternate name of our podcast. What about this? You're at a funeral. Oops, all burial. Um, no, just the one. <laughs> just the one, please. <laughs> yeah, only one burial at the funeral. Mm, thank you. So, uh, so then they go down and talk to. Um, they find some lipstick and a, a handkerchief, a headscarf, and they go and they speak with not David. The oh, uh, 
for all the pe- BIPOC listeners. Just because the headscarf, no people of color are featured in this episode. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. No. No. Said it because you can't. Not. Said it because you can't. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but then they interview not David, the 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 um, the handsome bear, Winnie the Pooh. What's his name? Oh, Rowley. Rowley? Yeah, Rowley. Rowley. And he's like, you've detained me, and I was just trying to talk to the guy, and I'm the one that found the body, and so it's terrible that you've done this. It's awful. I shouldn't be detained. I have business. I be, be, and they're like, okay, 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 fine. Go, go, leave. You're unpleasant to be around. He goes, I have to go tell Rosalind, is it, that he has to go tell? His, his wife or the other woman? There's two blonde women. There are two blonde women. One is Irish, one is English. Yes. Oh. She's, he, who does he have to go tell? The Englishman, the English woman, the Irish woman? Oh, I don't know. They walk into a bar and they say, <laughs> 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 no uh, The English woman is Lynn. The Irish one is, of course, Rosaline. Rosaline. And there's this wonderful matriarchal character that hangs out at the pub as well. Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. very yes. catty. Very fun Mrs. character. Because they, she, they think she's a wackadoo, but she's really not. Very astute. Um... I believe that is Beatrice Lippincott. Yes. Yes. There's your Beatrice. Yeah. Um, no, Mrs. Ledbetter. Mrs. Led- Ledbetter. What a Led- good name. Better. Led better. What can I do with that? Led better. I get to I like to get to know her a little better. Uh, there we go. Led better <laughs> better yellow letter. <laughs> <laughs> uh so then they go speak they have to let the uh, not Lynn Irish gal Rosalind Rosalind Lynn and Rosalind really you couldn't I know Agatha. we didn't write this no <laughs> we did not they had to go tell her that her husband showed up and then immediately was murdered and she's like I don't know how to take this at all God I hope this is in the beloved episode <laughs> oh man I if it is y- y'all are wrong I don't care I'll, no, I'll fight don't... anyone in the streets I'm fully vaccinated. I have no fear. We only fight in the streets for scrims. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's an inquest about the murder. And they get a guy, a star witness, um, uh, old crew. Uh, uh, Robert Morley from before. What was his name? Yeah. Um, no, Major. Oh, goodness, help uh, the major. We'll just call him the major. He's yeah. in a wheelchair. He served with um, Bobby in Mumbai. Yeah. And so they. No, w- Mombasa. That Mombasa. I remember. Thank you. My apologies. Um, so they served together in Mombasa. Also, Lynn has been in Africa and has a prior relationship to Poirot. And they've been sending letters and they are pen pals. And it's very, very fun. Um Side Wait, Lynn has? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yeah, Lynn, because oh, at sure. the end of the episode, she okay. gives him a trinket. Oh, yeah. Um, Poirot's friends with everybody. Yeah, and so, because he knew her dad. And okay. then her dad died. Well, you died. thought she would have lend more of a hand throughout uh, the episode. Yeah, yeah. I... So, <laughs> they're at the inquest, and the guy, the, the major goes, yep, that was Bobby, all right. And then Bobby's former wife is like, no, it wasn't. And everyone's like, <gasps> And she's like, I, he was my husband. I know him better than some guy he had a job with. And they're like, that's fair. And then also David is... Yeah, uh, uh, pause. Sorry. In this inquest, this child bride yes. talks about how she watched this old ass man bathe mm. every day for mm. two years. Every day. Ew. And he sang a song and he, she was like, I, went, I slept with him, and then she goes, I knew him, and everyone's like, oh, in the biblical sense. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're, I'm, now I'm imagining that. Ugh. Ooh, ooh, oh, no. This has awoken something in me. You know, that kind of thing. Maybe just Great. me. It's fine. Okay, something so. has changed within me. <laughs> <laughs> something is not the same. <laughs> Thank yes. you to Mark Platt and Stephen Schwartz for the usage of... <laughs> I think we're well under our six seconds. <laughs> or six bars. What is it? Six seconds, remember. six bars? Uh, yeah. It's a big difference. Just to say. <laughs> so then David is interviewed, and he's very hostile. And he's like, well, I was with a lady that night, so it couldn't have possibly been me. And then, like, can you tell us the lady's name? And he's like, oh, I couldn't possibly tell. I don't kiss and tell. Ooh. Brag much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, BTW. Uh, David, right? 
Yeah. And uh, Lynn, yeah. who is an affianced to Raleigh, our, uh, our handsome... Uh, There's a, a lot of hot and heavy petting in this episode, and it's not good hot and heavy. It does. It's just uncomfortable. I felt discomfort. Sure. I think any petting is uncomfortable. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, Lynn is... Uh, is cheating on her fiance with this this jerk David. Yeah. Which I get. Yeah, you only live once. Somehow. So then, Well you stick around David too. Long. <laughs> I hate that he's attractive. I hate it. It's really obnoxious. Uh, to I me. also hate that for you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what's going yeah. on in my brain. Ooh. But no, that's quarantine. Because like I long. find people year. like really attractive sometimes. That people are just like, "What is wrong with you?" Oh, yeah. and I'm just like, "But like, what do like? What are you not saying?" Oh God, <laughs> no, yeah. And I usually like I like nice guys. I do. I don't know why. I don't I'm know nice why man. Hmm? Do you remember that? There's that line from uh, what? Yeah, uh, Empire Strikes Back. I just didn't hear you. He goes, "I like I'm nice man." He goes, "I." She goes, "I like nice men," and Harrison goes. I'm nice man. Oh yeah, it's very good. Not sweet. I'm a nice man. I'm, I'm nice, nice man. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's it's extremely good. Very real house of real house vibes of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then there's another person interviewed who is Is there or is it just the three? Regardless, David's being a, an asshole and the judge is having none of it and he's like banging his gavel and he's like shut up. You're not, your position is not good here. And he's like, I don't got no position. Because that's how people from Ireland sound. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, I ain't got no position, see? Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and Paul was like, what does that mean later on after the inquest? He talks to the to Spence and he goes, what does that mean? He's like, well, I don't remember. What does that mean? <laughs> he's like not in a good position. He has no social standing, right? He has no nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Um, so... That happens, and then Poirot conducts his investigation, and we find out who the murderer is. Should we go to an app? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think, yeah. Like, listen, okay, so he talks to everybody, and also, over the course of events, um, Lynn decides to tell Rowley that it's off. Oh, yeah. He oh, almost oh, hits her with a shovel. Sorry, uh, before that. And a I, lot I, happens before that. No, I know. And I thank you for getting us to this point. I do. I promise you, I'm not going to add too much on. You're more. adding more the more you talk. Just say what you're going to say. Oh. Uh, no, I want to hear what Tyler has to say, please. No, I'm saying, say what you're going to say. You don't need to apologize. <laughs> saying is you don't need to apologize. It's fine. Say what you're going to say. I want to hear it, please. Say yeah. what you're going to say. I want to see you be brave. Fist in the air. And then... <laughs> So there's a moment where Poirot goes back to the scene of the murder. Yes. <clears throat> and he ha- David Suchet has the room and the scene to himself, and it is fierce and wonderful. It I is. love it. Yes. He is like, and this is like, I, like, we might have seen this before, but this is the first time I've seen it, like, frame where he is, like, going through his space by himself. At least the mm-hmm. first time that I remember uh, in quite some time. Yeah. That he, like, is left alone and we get to see him look around the space and, like, sniff things and then, you know, <laughs> t- taste and touch things. It's, like, he's using all five senses in the scene and it's I wonderful. I love watching David Suchet <laughs> sniff things. I do. He's wonderful. Oh, uh, and just, like, getting to, like, he doesn't even speak in the scene. No, he doesn't. It's, oh. Uh, he does the, what I call the Suchet look like five times in this episode. It's phenomenal. If this scene was just, like, if this episode was just this scene I'm describing right now and the reveal would have been fine. Beautiful. Would have been 10 out of 10. So, I- <laughs> spoiler alert. What It's not. <laughs> what he finds out is that on the one side of the fireplace, because the person has been bludgeoned to death with a, a fire. The a poker. person? Yeah. Poker. Oh my God. Did another person die in this though? Not yet. Oh. Um, but he's there. Just, just the two so far. Oh, did we already get to that? No. 
Yes, so, we did. We have the murder at the very top of the episode, the explosion. Oh, yeah, And then I we have Al- Alfred, or whatever his name it's is. Bobby. His well, name is what, Robert. What, I was going after his um, pseudonym. Sorry. Do we have another person? There's there? another person. Kind of, not really. Okay. So, anyway, Suchet in this scene finds out that half of the, the fireplace has been cleaned and half of it has not. Mm. And he's like, that's weird, <laughs> but I know what it, I know exactly why that's the case. I love how t- surprised Tyler and I are about this. Despite no. Tyler going on and on about how much you love this scene. No, I know that. I'm now thinking of who is this other person and how. That gets murdered? It, it's a loophole murder. Okay, all right. Don't worry. That, but I'm just letting you know what my face was. Like, it was not that. I understood what you're talking about. I got I, caught up in another thought. I didn't understand. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so, <laughs> someone's got to be the designated driver of this podcast, and it shouldn't be me. But it is. But it is. <laughs> so, that happens. I'm, I, I, again, I like going character by character rather than chronologically, if I can help it. Great. So, that does happen beforehand. So, with, um, with not David, uh, Al, Alonzo, a- Alimony, what's the, her fiance? Lindsay. Raleigh. Fiance, Raleigh. Thank you. So, Raleigh, and she confronts Raleigh, like, by the way, I'm in love with David. He gets upset, and almost hits her with a shovel, decides not to, but then it's pushes It's very her. Lenny and of Mice and Men. <laughs> what? It is. Isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> this is the second time I was thinking about of Mice and Men today, actually. That's very funny. Great. Continue, please. Um, so, but that's when Poirot shows up and then starts to gather everybody. Yeah. So, that happens way later. It was almost later. like Baby's First Fight. Like a little Raleigh. Oh. <laughs> so, but then she he like pins her to some hay and it's very exactly. uncomfortable. Exactly. Very uncomfortable. Yeah, he's almost strangling her. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. And then they, they take him away. Um, at one point, David is arrested and then is sprung. He gets sprung because of Lynn going, hey, I was with him that night. And he's like, what are you doing? Don't be on my behalf. Ooh, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's being all... No matter what anything does, David wants the opposite to happen. That's true. It's, he is very ornery. He's a cantankerous son of a bitch. But there's yeah. a which be- normally I would find attractive, mm-hmm. right? Maybe if it was the Irish thing. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. I have dated my fair share. Well, actually, that doesn't mean that I don't harbor and like some. You prejudice. can date someone who you yeah. hate. You know, yeah. I. Yeah, you've dated black people. Yeah, no, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. a couple oh, of times hey. I was like, hey, Christina, what if I'm just dating you to try and get over my own personal racism? <laughs> She's like, that's not funny. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then it's definitely not that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was very funny, Tyler. Was it? Just, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I know. But I'm not. But I am. But I'm not. But anyway, not. there's a beautiful scene after the funeral. Um, Which is not the ep- title of this episode. It's the no, of the previous episode. Yes. We're in the midst of the flood. That's the title of the episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> taken at the flood. Remember Liam Nason. Liam Nason. Uh-huh. Oh, taken. Okay. Taken. Mm-hmm. Yes. You remember Liam Nason, and then you remember Noah, and so you remember. Oh, Liam Neeson was in Taken, okay. but he wasn't Russell Crowe, who right. was in Noah, which is oh. a flood, and that's how I remember it. And then I look at the monitor where I've written it down. <laughs> so there's a beautiful scene. Um, there's two scenes briefly after the funeral of presumed Bobby, who I, I at this point she's been convinced that it is because 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 is really upset. She's real verklempt about the whole situation. Mm-hmm. And David Suchet Poirot Poirot <laughs> sits down with her, and they talk about. Oh well, he'll he's in heaven and you'll meet him in heaven. And he's like, she's like, nope. <laughs> and he's like, excuse me. And she's like, I'm not going there. It's like, what do you mean? He's like, I have something. I'm. She calls herself a right bitch. It's very interesting. Oh yeah. And it's very sad. That's sad. And then she runs off to talk to David, who's been arrested. But also prior to this, we're getting this all sort of like Inception land like order of things. Um, Poirot speaks with with um raleigh mm-hmm. about 
discontinuing his investigation because the barristers need to be paid. He's like, oh, I'll waive my fees. It's fine. I'm already in it. Like, which is something we see over and over and over again with Poirot. It's like once he's in a case, he's in a case. Yeah. Another thing regarding Poirot, he does the um, Columbo. I, I just I'm oh, he sorry. does. Yeah. One, yeah. Which one more thing? Uh, just one more thing. Uh, like three times. It's really he does. Great. He does. It's yes. Really great. Rich pointed that out from mm. the other room. I would imagine so. Because it's the comedy rule of three. Ooh. And then at a certain point, he speaks with the doctor and he's like, well, I was uh, seeing a patient or something. But then he notices that he's taking some sort of supplement as he was uh, after being awoken by Poirot. He also, Poirot also interviews Kathy and the other woman. And they say, Francis, Francis, thank Mm. you. Francis McDormand, Oscar winner. Um, Francis, yeah, don't get me started. Well, this time. This time, yeah. She uh, deserved her previous For Oscar. Fargo. Yes. And, and then three also, billboards. Yeah, three billboards. Mm. She's three-time Oscar winner. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Poirot in, investigates Francis and Kathy about like, hey, so what, what happened? Where were you on the night of the murder? And they're like, we were playing Hangman. And they're like, oh, he's like, oh, one more thing. What was the word? And they say ads, which is like an axe like in- instrument. Oh, A D Z E? Perhaps I don't, I don't know remember. how to spell it. I thought it. But I believe it's just, it's a very. A D Z E? It's impossible to hang a man on that. That is a four letter word oh, or a three letter word th- yeah, one with an two. A and a D in it. Mm-hmm. So he's not buying it. Sure. Also, there was a confrontation because one of the murders that you were talking about, I believe, Melissa, is the major shoots himself to death. He shoots himself in the side of the head mm-hmm. and leaves a uh, hundred pounds to a servant that he barely even knows. And then he confronts some... Um, A-D-Z. A-D-Z. Okay, three letters. Four. Yeah. E oh, with an E. E. You with were an correct. E. Oh, I was you, correct. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, you... New York Times cross. A-D-Z-E. Yeah. Sorry. Easy as one, two, three, four. Um, I have done the New York Times crossword puzzle on multiple occasions. Thank you. So <laughs> he speaks with, now here's a character. I don't know their relationship to any of this whatnot malarkey. Great. Hullabaloo. But he speaks with Francis mm-hmm. and about the fact that the person that was killed, quote unquote Bobby, yeah. was her brother in Charles Charles in disguise. And she says something very, I felt in my bones, which is she was like, I'll be damned if I'm going to cry in front of a stranger. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, Sam. Honestly, uh, like that was like, she gets me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, maybe I was like, I honestly like looked at Brian and I was like, I wonder if that's a British thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's Stiff like, upper is lip. Is this us? Yeah. <laughs> Stiff upper lip and all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then a mu- man, a mom, then a mom comes rushing in and he says, uh, he, like he comforts her. And who is this man? Oh, um, oh gosh, he's, he's tall and he's, he's balding. Got, yeah. We see him throughout. I can't remember uh, his is name. this person? The husband. Of Francis. Yeah. Oh, okay. Done and done. Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy Close. Jeremy. Jeremy. Okay, so Jeremy comes in in the comfort. Blah, 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 blah. And then... You mark the time he enters the scene, because it's all Jeremy Baramy. I was wondering yeah. who was going to say it first. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so then also, um, Roslyn. Mm-hmm. attempts to commit suicide by taking yes. a lot of morphine is unsuccessful and Poirot goes up and tastes the vial and goes aha I know everything now but David comes in and comforts her after um, Lynn has been taking care of her quite rightly and quite nicely because she had to do stuff like that in Africa and because she's doing something nice David has to say stop he says <laughs> stop and goes into hug his sister strangely and then she starts comforting david because they're in love and like petting his head and it keeps cutting back to poirot who is just like 
huh. And then the awkward foursome that was cut for time in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you love to have a drugged out foursome. Tyler, what is wrong with you? And then Jimmy It's Soto okay. And- Papa was there. <laughs> Boo! Hiss! Do we go to an ad break? Yes, then? we should go to an ad break Great. right now. I don't remember the episode still, so. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm not going to be helpful. We're at the ad break. Oh, we're so at the ad break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Break. We're doing the ad break. It's we okay. Should do that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can go check out the Scavengers Network at scavengersnetwork.com and check out all the fine podcasts and other consumables they have there. We are going to be doing yes. a um, event. What is it called? It's an independent podcast showcase. Ooh. Now here's the thing. I know what it's called. Don't know when it is. That's exciting. Oh, well, here's where I can step in and help. Nice. Oh, thank Jeepus. You see, I went out and bought several cases, and we're going to show our audience. I am going to kick. Is that, is that not? No? Oh, all right. I hope I kick. I wind up like Charlie like Charlie Brown at a football to your butt, and you dodge out of the way. I'm punished because I, I, I want the sweet reliefs of death. I hope I hit my head on a rock. I got a rock, and I died. No. That's a pretty big country. A big ass rock? Yeah, I know. A rock so far away. I, no, sorry. Um, I ran. I ran so far away. <laughs> I made a musical theater joke for everyone who caught it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, what was it? Oh, dang it. A big oh, ass rock? Ah. Uh, big ass rock. Big damn door. Yeah. So, I'm going to leave you to ruminate. <laughs> yeah, well, while Tyler figures that out, um, the date is, is Saturday. It's one of the Saturdays in May. I, is it the 20-something Saturday? Oh, God, uh, yes, oh, probably. Oh, crikey, we're doing such a good job. It's the 22nd. At, thank you. And at 4 p.m. Oh, oh, we're talking about the actual thing we're doing, not the episode. Yes, it's, episode a, it's the, the 22nd, May 22nd at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., Okay. Um, I know this well because I absolutely ruined our schedule and had to redo ruined it. Ruined is such a dramatic word for a, huh? Oh, I guess we have to do this now. Yeah. I, but true. Again, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Again, again, I was like, M- Melissa, how do I say I don't give a crap in a very kind way? I was like, you do whatever. I, I couldn't possibly be bothered. I'm not bothered, as as Tyler, your people say. I'm not, I ain't bothered about it. When you the poo? I ain't bothered. English you don't, you've never, yeah, you've people? never, English people. You've oh, never okay. heard, I'm not, you've never seen the Catherine Tate sketch, I'm not bothered. I haven't, sadly. Okay, I have something to send you after the show. Thank we you. also have merchandise available for you to purchase at teepspring.com slash the mill. Yes, Okay, Melissa. did we say what we're doing at, f- at 3 p.m. on, uh... We're doing the Independent Shop Podcast Showcase, yes. we 3 had... p.m. Eastern Time. Standard Time. Daylight time? Standard, Standard time. Is Eastern it? St- EST. Whatever New York is on. EST, Eastern Standard Time. Sure. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> where can people find us on the social media? At ADC Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I will surely be. Oh, I whistled there. I will yeah. surely be sharing. <laughs> surely be sharing things about the showcase. Or that's right. Whatever it is called. There's yes. Podcast independent podcast showcase. Independent podcast now, showcase. Here's part of May twenty second. Yes. A little bit here. Oh. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, as well, Tyler runs the Facebook. I run the Twitter, and Melissa runs the Instagram. So Correct. if you're looking to contact one of us specifically and harass us on social media, <laughs> right? Uh, that's 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 you're going to be your direct line. But also, where was that when I was single and looking for love? Where was that plugged in? Uh, Luckily, I found uh, the love of my life. You didn't need us. (laughs) Turns out. (laughs) What a surprise. Where was all that energy (laughs) then? (laughs) Uh, To quote Eddie Murphy. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Tyler is Facebook. Kristen is Twitter. I am Instagram. The three genders. So also, (laughs) almost did a spit take. Aha. Of wine, which is terrible. Oh, what a waste. Um, so also we have an email address. I'll just take over, Melissa. I have an email address, uh, amateurdetectorclub at gmail.com. If you want to give us negative criticism, put 
to Tristan in the subject because Melissa doesn't want to hear that. Nope. Mess. I don't. And if you're, um, I'm now looking for love. So also. <laughs> Amateur Detective Club at gmail.com if you want Not to date Tristan. my personal Tristan. email. Please direct it because uh, I do want these two to see that somebody's interested in me <laughs> to prove a point to win some money. We've made a bet. Yes. Please put it in our shared email address. <laughs> 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 Do you want to date Tristan? <laughs> uh, what's wrong with you? Number one. Number two, Tyler, what, tell the people what else they can get for money. Besides my love. <laughs> no time for love, Dr. Jones. I mean, if you're paying for love, like I can revisit my relationship. <laughs> 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 Depends on how much you're paying. Mm. I need a part-time job is all I'm saying. That's right. Um, so we need money. Only Patreon fans. exists. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we're on it. <laughs> so <laughs> patreon.com slash ADC pod. There's no shame. Nobody nobody gives us money. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. We have a few. We have a few people that give us money and we're very grateful for them. We are. We but the rest so of y'all need to step it up. Y'all getting the good good for free. Now, here's the thing. We have about, on, on average, 100 listeners an episode. If That's each nice. of you give $1. Oh, I thought we had more. That's fine. <laughs> we have an indeterminate amount, on average, of <laughs> listeners. If you all give us $1 a month, that's less than a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah, that it really will, is. Uh, that will help us buy equipment, um, do advertising, and try and grow the show. Imagine at the end of this podcast, somebody is in your face like they are at the checkout line asking you to give a dollar to blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The American Cancer Society. Yeah, that's a good one. Not Autism Speaks. No. Okay, well, then I'm not going to like tell people to not... Like, we're not the American Oh, I see what you mean. I'm sorry, I totally misread what you were doing. (laughs) (laughs) Rather than rounding up to a charity when you use a Venmo transaction or Grubhub, give it to us or say, we're charity cases. Just, just, just please. give us a dollar, please. please Lisa, Lisa, can I have a dollar? Please. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> okay, back to the show. So Poirot has gathered everybody into the pub. It's uh, it's a pub reveal um, as opposed to a parlor reveal. Yeah. My kind of reveal. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love a fish and ship. Poirot goes through everything, but the doctor, okay, so the doctor stole the morphine from... Uh, Rosaline. So she didn't OD. Mm-hmm. She was saved because she didn't, ta- she didn't take too, like enough morphine that would kill her. Because the doctor has his own addiction for me to opiates and had stolen parts of the prescription and replaced it with castor oil. <laughs> she can't do anything right. The doctor sabotaged her. Uh, she, he full of beastie boys her suicide attempt. <laughs> Free association is fun. <laughs> you just you remember stuff. So that's that. Um, then Poirot accuses also that of um earlier in the scene uh in the episode rather um that that uh what is her name not lynn not rosalind francis pressured the major to lie under oath during the inquest saying that's bobby and that's why he's killed himself so basically they're responsible for his death now also he says uh hey talk about a major plot point oh yeah 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 so, no, I'm so sorry. David does that, right? I don't know. Anyway, David's behind everything because he also blew up the house and he's killed his sister because he was jealous because she was getting married, which That's is the cre- beginning oh, of the weird. But, but Raleigh killed some people too. He did. He <laughs> killed the uh, the guy that they thought was Bobby. He pushed him into the to the. He shoved him real hard. He hit his head on the stone um, outline um, fireplace. Stone setting of the fireplace. Yeah. Fireplace. yeah. yeah. And so he covered it up, making it look like it was a more proper murder as opposed to an accident, which is weird. I can see it, you know. Yeah. And so Poirot is like, there hasn't been any actual murders because they were, they were both accidental deaths, more or less. There's suicide, not accidental, but like self-murder. But. 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 There are two. <laughs> <laughs> there are. But uh, he, in this scene, 
Dave, I'm going to back up for the mic here for a sec. David Suchet goes, but why? <laughs> so many times. Why? Oh my I'm God, there's like, so much yelling in this episode. Why? <laughs> more yelling per square inch than your typical episode of Poirot. That is true. Much more yelling, you would think I would have been more like engaged Aroused. because mm. there was yelling. Right? To capture your attention. No. No. Um, so basically, David blew up the house at the beginning of the thing because it was his sister was getting married and he was jealous of his sister because he loved his sister so much, which is weird, weird, yes, weird. But not a, confirmed, but not weird regardless. Maybe not incestuous, but weird regardless. Definitely incestuous. So then he tr- basically grooms a maid, a maid servant to to swap out his sister, and he blows up the house for revenge with dynamite, which is, I think, also racist. Because of the... Because of black dynamite? Yeah. <laughs> dynamite. 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 <laughs> dynamite. So, no, because um, uh, Irish people always be making bombs. Uh, you know. uh, also, he works oh. out as a railroad engineer, which is uh, not... That's just stereotypical. It's not racist. It's just stereotypical. <laughs> So he's blown up the house to try and have sex with his sister. Sure, Allegedly. Yeah. Okay. Allegedly his sister? Tristan. Yeah, I allege <laughs> okay. that David's a pervert, a sex pervert. Yeah, I know he and, is. Uh, and so he's like, aha, Poro, you, figure, you figured it out. But you didn't figure out one thing is how much dynamite is in the pub. Oh, yeah. And everyone freaks out. And um, Lynn comes over and goes, you're not going to do it because you love me. And he's like, I don't reckon I will. But also, there's no, I was just uh, having a bit of a laugh. You really. didn't remember. It was going to be fine because you have your lucky charms on oh, you. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Uh. And then they hang him. And then they hang him. <laughs> and he says this weird, creepy poem. No, he yeah. sings a song. It was so from almost... the song that the husband, quote unquote, sang in the bathtub. To oh, the I see. I see. That's it's very creepy and weird. And then, isn't there an epilogue? Oh, right. Because yes, because uh, Poirot reads about the hanging in the next in, in the, the newspaper. newspaper in the next day. And then, Lynn comes by and drops off an African statue and says that she's supposed to only let only good things into your house. Oh, there is a character that I loved in this. Oh, um, the, his butler. Um, Poirot has a new butler, but he oh, doesn't yeah. like the way he does the filing. But he does like the way how he attends to his dress. But he, it's no Miss Levin. I basic. hated him. Yeah. Because he wasn't Miss Levin. Exactly. Yeah. I like, okay, let me rephrase. I liked that there was an absence felt. Why did he fire Miss Lemon? Is I, my Ms. only Lemon? question. I think Miss Lemon left of her own accord. I think because I Poirot think retired. And then she was like, well, I have to find another job. There you go. Maybe she's married. Well, Maybe she she's can kids. retire, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, what did we think of this episode? Boy, zero. Like, Boy. what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Just like, uh, like <laughs> I will get This it. is, po- like, it's not as bad, but this is the Poirot oh, of Chris- murder, murder for, for Christmas. Christmas. Shout out. Because I want a murder for Christmas if somebody gifts me this episode. That's funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I give it a point five because it made me laugh a couple of times for the right reasons. Uh, I found David funny because he's such an asshole. Because <laughs> it's just like when someone is that ad- abashedly has that bad of an attitude, I think it again. He must not- have read the script. Yeah. <laughs> he but like he. <laughs> oh goodness. He, I like that headcanon. The actor is just a fan. <laughs> Initially <laughs> meant to be very charming, but then if you could believe it on the day. Uh, but he, when it's not a real person and they're that cantankerous, it's very funny to me. Also, I liked the doctor. Again, cantankerous and funny. So it made me laugh a couple of times. So it's a like a 0.5 to a 1, but I would never watch this again. Specifically, coming off, if you remember the last episode, I gave it a 9.5. Oh, Best man. episode I've seen in a while. To whiplash, the freaking whiplash. Can I tell you? Also, I it went so quick for me. After the funeral was the name of the last episode. This episode's name is Try Oh, it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh it's toward- Liam Neeson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Taken. Is- yeah. Taken. And then, but Liam Neeson isn't at Oh, it's taken at Noah's place. 
Take it. At weekend the, at Noah's. Weekend at Noah's. There we go. At weekend the weekend flood. at Noah's colon the flood. <laughs> weekend at Noah's colon the flood. Yes. Perfect. Sorry, Tristan. Please continue. No, it's just the, I, it went quick because I couldn't pay it. I was like, and it's over. Like, it was just like, what? It was, it was like, I had a, it's like sometimes when you're kind of in, in between wake, waking and sleep. Sure, sure, sure. You yes. have a flash of images that you're like, you're almost dreaming, but not quite. Mm-hmm. But you can't remember it that well. That is what this episode was to me. Yeah. I was, it was almost transcendental because of it, but I, I am surprised I remembered as much of it as I did. Thank God you did. Yeah. I, yes. Who's the hero now? So, for me. The always. Yeah, always. <laughs> I'm going to give it a two. I know. Generous, right? Because <laughs> I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt for the fact that I can't remember most of it. So, you're saying it could be good. I'm saying. It has the potential to be good because you don't remember it. Yes. <laughs> I've had a lot I of sexual experiences like don't, that. Don't go don't, back and watch don't it. Go Just back and watch hold it. on to the feeling that it might mm-hmm. be good. Yeah. <laughs> Live in hope. I, uh, you, you all remember two episodes ago how much I remembered that episode. Yeah. I'm just trying to reassure you that I do really care and I really do pay attention and that this episode was just, I couldn't. Oh, I just no. Couldn't. It's, it it, it oh. happened. Oh. Also, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> also, this, this, the word I would use is egregious. This episode was an egregious display of incompetent filmmaking. The, oh, I forgot. The cinematography in this, whack as hell. There's a Michael Bay 360 shot for no and not reason. not even on the explosion. I know. <laughs> and then there's like whip pans. There's a bunch of handheld stuff. They do a, a weird thing when they're getting the confessions where they put it on a, like on a, ooh, ooh, like an 18 millimeter lens. And so the faces are all distorted. It's weird. They're, they make choices, but they don't work. The music, again, strange. I don't, there is no technical point. The only thing that saves this episode is David Suchet as Poirot. Yeah. Point five for David. For David. Suchet, not David the character. Oh, yes. Very much so. Thank you for the clarification. Great. And I think, uh, so this is this concludes uh, the entire <laughs> podcast. No. Um, yeah, we have just... to burn it to the ground. This was so, it's like bed bugs. We have to fumigate. We have to... <laughs> <laughs> commit just, emotional arson just kidding just kidding uh no it concludes the series yes. slash season if you're Ten. uh american yeah. uh and uh we'll do something else next week i'm yeah. still pushing for attack the clones i'll figure it out i know more <laughs> about every, that can i tell you i say it and you say every time <laughs> We'll talk about it or we'll figure it out just to dismiss it just immediately <laughs> Look, just to be like, well, yeah, 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 we'll talk. About it. It's like when your parent goes, oh, yeah, we'll go to McDonald's tomorrow. Oh, that sounds really good. Oh, really? or- we got the oh, we got McDonald's. Out. We got burgers. Yeah, at yeah, home. yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> got McDonald's. I got McDonald's. And <laughs> that we my mother also did. Well, because we go because the trick is. Your mom goes, we'll get McDonald's tomorrow. Oh, okay. Then the next day, oh, mom, you said we could have McDonald's. Oh, we'll get it tomorrow. And then the weekend comes, and dad cooks you something on the grill. And it's not oh. not McDonald's. That Eddie Murphy bit is true. It's just true. Yeah. So we'll figure out something to do. It might be Murder, She Wrote. might be Attack of the Clones. might be something uh, Black Dynamite. might be. But one thing is for sure. I like that you just me on black, but I died of my... <laughs> <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not. One thing is for sure, though. <laughs> I pulled a Tyler. Oh, my gosh. Pick up what I'm putting down. Oh, yeah, wait, one, sorry, for... <laughs> one thing is for sure. One thing is for sure. Yeah. This is the end of this episode. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to a close. Gavel sound. Butt soup. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>